Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. What a beautiful day, and uh, I know you'll enjoy the facility when you get a chance to see it. It's my, uh, I'm Jack Spraga. It's my honor and privilege to serve as president at uh, Bristol Community College, and I want to welcome you. Uh, we're standing in front of a, literally a dream that's come true, the opening of our Bristol Community College uh, Center at Attleboro. Four years ago, I said just about those exact same words when we opened and cut the ribbon at the uh, on County Street at the former uh, high, high school. Uh, but as exciting as that day was, and it was very exciting, uh, today we celebrate the achievement of a new and improved dream, one that builds on our earlier progress, a permanent community college site in Attleboro. This center, with its bright classrooms, the latest in technology, and ample parking, compared to County Street, this is much better, <laughs> um, we have the space to grow and to serve the residents of the greater Attleboro community. And also we have the resources that the community deserves. At this point, we uh, are enjoying an increase in student enrollment. So you should know this, we, uh, as of today, last year, compared to last year of today, we're 60% uh, increase in enrollment. 60%, it's an remarkable. We will pass, by the time classes start, the day after uh, Labor Day, we will pass 800 students with that vision, that mile, major milestone of 1,000 students uh, not in the not too far distant future. So we're very proud of it, and I want to acknowledge right away the dean of the Attleboro campus, Kathy uh, Torpy Garganta. <laughs> Kathy, would you? can't ask her to come up and say a few words because she can't say a few words about Attleboro. She'll go on and on, so we had to keep her up. But she's remarkable, and if you see her coming, you can expect a commercial from Attle about Attleboro and about BCC. And Kathy, you and the staff have just done a terrific work here. But imagine a 60% increase. That's unheard of. Uh, classes begin on September 2nd. Um, this center is the fulfillment of our dreams and will be a place where dreams come true for countless area learners. This dream has come true through the efforts of many, many people and organizations. And first, I'd like to acknowledge the vision and the courage of the Bristol Community College Foundation. The volunteer community leaders who serve on our foundation have always put our students first and willingly devoted committee time, energy, and their personal and corporate resources to provide scholarships and other support to enhance our students' experiences. As soon as the opportunity for this facility arose, however, some two years ago, the foundation willingly stepped up to the plate and negotiated the purchase of the building. It is this willingness to support Bristol Community College and the foundation's can-do attitude that enables the college to take this great innovative entrepreneurial step and to achieve great things through our mission priorities of quality and access. We're providing access to opportunity for a better life through education for the uh, community members of the greater Attleboro area. I'd like to recognize, if I could, uh, for you some of the members of our uh, BCC Foundation. We have the president of the foundation, Luke Travis. Luke, would you be recognized? I cannot tell you the, uh, when Luke isn't doing his full-time work as president of the foundation, he tries to practice law uh, in the time remaining to him. And um, I cannot tell you the countless pro bono hours that Luke provided as we negotiated the purchase uh, you can imagine almost everything that had to do with this project was done uh, in an entrepreneurial, uh, innovative uh, experience. And uh, Luke was at the forefront in negotiating and contractual arrangements, and uh, uh, we just couldn't pay the billable hours that he's put in, and we're very grateful to him. Other members of our foundation who are, could be with us today, uh, Miriam London, Miriam? <laughs> Betty Welsh. Elliot Rosenfeld, our treasurer. Dale Ferris. Sue Lavoy. We got a number of the foundation people here. Max Volterra. Max. And Loretta George. Loretta George is here from the very first start of the foundation itself at BCC uh, a few years ago. Loretta, thank you very much. Loretta, just so you know this story, I love to tell this story. Uh, Loretta uh, said that when they started the foundation, 
and Betty Welsh as well, and others who started it. They had a uh, big celebration when they raised uh, ten thousand dollars. They hit the ten thousand uh, uh, dollar level, and I must tell you that as of this year, our foundation has ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Uh, so we, we're the beneficiaries of your donations and your support. Uh, and of course, it goes to our, uh, our priority of access, providing access and student success. Thank you so much for all you do, VCC Foundation. Your support empowers us. And please, uh, would everyone join me in congratulating the visionary and far-sighted organization, the VCC Community College Foundation. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, everyone. At this time, also, I'd like to recognize the efforts of another set of builders, um, E. Randy Jarvis, the architects, and Bufftree general contractors, and the CEO of Bufftree, Scott Costa. I saw Scott here somewhere. Where's Scott? There he is. Thank you, Scott. It's not too often that you hear of construction projects coming in under time and under budget, and uh, Bufftree did a, just a terrific job for us, and we're very grateful. They took our dreams for Attleboro and turned them into reality. Uh, in a few minutes, you'll be enjoying the, the fruits of their labors, and I want to publicly thank them for their role. There is another group of visionary and far-sighted leaders without whom this day would not have uh, been possible, the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees. The trustees comprise the college's governing board. They have led this campaign to provide outstanding service to the people throughout the region. Their creative leadership and deep commitment to the people of Attleboro is made manifest every day. As president, I'm very grateful for their leadership. It is my pleasure to introduce now one of Attleboro's most tireless and fearless advocates, the chair of our board of trustees, Donald Smith. Donald. Thank you. Thank you. Jack is so kind to me. Um, good morning, everyone. I'd like to recognize uh, a few of the uh, dignitaries from the Attleboro area that I've seen in the audience. I'd like to recognize Mayor Kevin Dumas. Thanks, Kevin. I think I spotted uh, our superintendent of the schools, Pia Durkin, out there. Uh, Frank Cook, our council president. Bill Bergebein, here he is back there. Uh, Bill Bowles. Our you know, who's also running for state rep. Uh, George Ross, who's also running for state rep. Have I missed any of the other counselors? Okay, thank you. Um, I'd also like to recognize city collector Debbie Marcosio. Debbie, do I see you out there? There you go. And also city clerk Betty Chakru and city treasurer Ethel Sandbach. I've seen Ethel here? No? Okay. And also our, our state delegation, uh, which I'll mention a little bit later, but uh, Representative John Lepper, <laughs> Representative uh, Betty Poirier, Senator Scott Brown, and Senator Jim Timothy on my right. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Lisa Nelson, who's here today representing uh, Congressman Jim McGovern. Uh, there she is right over there. Uh, Jim couldn't make it today, but he sends his best wishes to everyone. Okay. Um, also like to recommend, uh, 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 recognize uh, Representative Steve D'Amico from Seekonk and Representative Jay Barrows from Mansfield and Representative Pat Haddad. Thank you. Um, also I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Fire Chief Ron Churchill I did see him somewhere back there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you, you see me a lot around town doing a lot of different things, but um, I do have a real job. Um, I'm, I'm employed by Bristol County Savings Bank, and I wish to acknowledge um, all of the time that they give me to get involved in all the projects I do. So thank you, Bristol County Savings Bank. Uh, well, let me start. Uh, Mayor Dumas, Dr. Molafaria from Edgewater, uh, Chairman Fred Clark from the uh, Chairman of the Board of Higher Education, distinguished guest, and to the people of the Attleboro area. On behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Trustees of Bristol Community College, I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to all who have helped us to accomplish this goal. 
This is a glorious and historic day for BCC in the Attleboro area. A ribbon cutting is a very simple and symbolic ceremony that cannot suitably convey the hard work, dedication, and persistence that was required of so many people. They felt, like we did, that the opening of a permanent and full-time Bristol Community College Center would be a success. This center will offer so much for the residents, employers of the Attleboro area. This is a project that literally has been de decades in the making. The trustees and I want to extend our deepest thanks to the Bristol Community College Foundation for their foresight in purchasing this building so that our dreams of the BCC Attleboro Center could be realized. There are so many others that I would like to thank, but I would like to acknowledge a few of the key people who were instrumental in making this a reality. I'd like to recognize the dedication and leadership of former Judy Robbins. Uh, Judy's on the West Coast visiting her grandchildren so she could not make it, but I know that our, her thoughts are with us. I'd also like to acknowledge Mayor Kevin Dumas for his idea and quick thinking to locate us temporarily in the former Brennan Middle School on County Street. Kevin was able to open doors for us with the superintendent and the school committee to allow BCC to temporarily occupy a space to provide, for the first time, a full-time and more comprehensive curriculum in higher education. Thank you, Mayor Dumas. <laughs> the trustees are also appreciative of the hard work and dedication of the staff of BCC. And I, I have to tell you, we have a very, very competent staff at Bristol Community College. In particular, I'd like to single out Dean Kathy Torpy Garganta, who has woven herself into the fabric of the community and placed her heart and soul into making BCC Attleboro a success. Thank you, Kathy. You know, I, I, I walk around the city and people literally think that Kathy grew up here. <laughs> we are fortunate to have an exceptionally capable and hardworking state delegation. Representative John Lepper, Representative Betty Poirier, Senator Scott Brown, and Senator Jim Timothy have all been there when we needed them and as often as we needed them. It was truly a team effort. I would also like to recognize the strong support and help of Congressman Jim McGovern, who was able to open some doors for us at the State House. And I as mentioned before, he couldn't be with us today, but he sends his congratulations. But I also want to offer a very, very special acknowledgement to Representative John Lepper. As many of you know, uh, John is retiring. He's chosen not to run for election, for re-election, because he wants to spend more time with his family. He has been with Bristol Community College from the beginning, a quest that has led us to all levels of state government and countless meetings. Right, John? There were some disappointments along the way, but there were many more glimmers of hope. John knew his, this would succeed. Well, John, we have our victory today. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all of your hard work and dedication in seeing this project through to the end. Please join me in wishing John the very best for the future. I would also like to recognize the contributions in support of FAIR, Friends of Attleboro, Interested in Revitalization, and the Attleboro Redevelopment Authority. FAIR and the ARA always understood the important role that BCC would have in improving in the quality of life and economic well-being of the residents and employers of the Attleboro area. This has been a long and challenging adventure. What you see today is the end result of an entire community and region working together and moving forward toward a common goal. It is the culmination of the dreams and hopes of many. It took the leadership and guidance of a college president who had the vision and one who was willing to take risks to achieve that vision. Dr. John Spraga saw the potential for success, but he also knew it would not be easy. I want to quote from Robert Frost, a very famous poem, The Road Less Traveled. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, Two roads diverged in a wood, 
and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. We all have make choices in our lives. There are those who will always take the safe and well-worn road. And then there are those who will take the road that seems less sure to others, the road less traveled. But this is the most difficult road to take. But in the end, it is the most fulfilling of all journeys. That passage from Frost is a reflection of the character, courage, and integrity of Jack Spraga. Not many of you would know that this humble and unassuming man served his country with honor with tour, tour, uh, two tours of duty in Southeast Asia as an Air Force pilot who has 1,500 hours of combat flying time and who holds the Distinguished Flying Cross, which is awarded for heroism and or ex extraordinary achievement during aerial flight. He is a Fulbright Scholar. He has achieved many other honors that are too numerous to mention here. You may not know this about Jack, because Jack would never tell you. It's never about Jack. He is a man of quiet strength and determination. He is the strongest advocate that we know when it comes to promoting the mission of Bristol Community College, putting the students in their needs first. The trustees of Bristol Community College chose to stand side by side with Dr. Spraga as he moved forward with this project, and for that we are very proud. Jack, the residents of Attleboro area will be eternally grateful for all that you have done. I ask that you join me in thanking Dr. John Spraga. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. That was uh, quite a surprise. I, I thought I went over his notes before he said anything. I didn't see those remarks, but thank you, Don. Those were wonderful. Uh, we did have another member of our foundation uh, that we wanted to recognize. Phil LaFrance uh, came in, who had uh, ties uh, to our foundation and to a great area here. Um, well, that was quite a... <laughs> I want to also recognize some of the other uh, members of our board who are with our board of trustees who are with us. Uh, Zelma Braga, Zelma, there we go. <laughs> Carl Cruz, Carl Cruz, Jim Grady, Joe Marshall, Tom Murray. And Gloria Sadler, I think that's everyone. Hi, Gloria. As Chairman Smith reported, we have countless numbers of conversations and meetings with leaders in the state to make the case for state funding for this facility. There have been many, many people who have helped uh, with this project, and as Chairman Smith said, we owe a debt of gratitude to, uh, especially to our local delegation. I echo Mr. Smith in thanking Representatives Lepper and Poyer, uh, Senators Brown and Timothy, other members of the great and uh, good general court have also been supported and uh, very supportive. Some could not be with us and they send their regards, but some are here and you've met them, uh, Representative Steve D'Amico and Pat Haddad and Jay Burrows. Thank you very much for coming. And I want to acknowledge the work, especially of Representative Dave Flynn of the Bridgewater area. The Dean, Dean Flynn, has been instrumental in, uh, in, so in supporting us and we're very proud of that. In addition, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the support of two uh, former legislators who championed our cause in Attleboro from those early days when I first arrived. Uh, former Senators Cheryl Jakes and Joanne Sprague were very active uh, in, these, uh, in these efforts, and I want to thank them uh, for their wonderful work. As you have seen, this initiative transcends party lines. Uh, access to education and opportunity knows no political boundaries. Throughout the many conversations about the needs and the goals for this uh, facility, we have had the privilege to work with some who immediately grasped the significance of our vision. Individuals who fully understood the importance of our mission and our goal in providing access to an opportunity for better life through education to the residents of greater Attleboro area. Uh, please recognize, for example, uh, Jan Mata the executive, from the Executive Office of the Mass Community Colleges. Jan, there she is. <clears throat> 
And it's my privilege also, uh, please recognize Mr. John Costello. We can, we can say he's, uh, with no exaggeration, he's the father of the Massachusetts Community College system. Uh, John was instrumental in arranging all of the beginning of the community colleges in, back in the 60s. Now, it is also my pleasure to introduce another uh, important individual. Uh, Mr. Fred W. Clark, Jr., who is chair of the Massachusetts Board of Higher Education, uh, is the lead champion of the public higher education system, and we are fortunate to have him at the helm for our Commonwealth. From the very onset of his administration, Chairman Clark fully understood the deeper meaning of this project in Attleboro, a project that, quite frankly, did not attract universal approval in certain quarters. And offered, he offered his unqualified support, and I am very grateful to the opportunity to serve with him, and I want to publicly acknowledge my, debt of great, my great debt of gratitude to him. Uh, it's no exaggeration to say, without Fred, uh, we would not be here today. So it's my honor uh, to introduce to you the chair of the Board of Higher Education, Fred Clark. Thank you, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, President Spraga. President Sprague is wearing an Ask Me um, name tag, and I want to tell you, uh, he was one of the first presidents I went to visit. So I asked him, what can I do for you? And within about a week, I think I was touring this facility with a, uh, a long list of to-dos. And in addition to all of the um, champions and heroes that have been mentioned in the State House and in, in the State Senate and in other quarters, the mayor, um, I did get a call within one hour of being appointed to the Board of Higher Education from my friend, Congressman Jim McGovern, who I served with, uh, with Congressman Moakley for many, many years. And Jim said, Fred, congratulations, but I have something for you to do. And it was to work on this particular project. Jim certainly understood and grasped the significance of, of what we're here today to celebrate. I just wanted to have a couple of um, general comments, and I'll be very brief. But, you know, we've all stayed up late, haven't we, watching the Olympics over the past couple weeks? I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit tired from uh, last night's beach volleyball. <clears throat> but we've all been thrilled at the competition, haven't we? We're all very proud of our na national standing, our international standing in the so-called medal count. We cheer when Michael Phelps wins his eighth gold, and we all are, express our disappointment when a baton or two get dropped in a relay race. But we're all good Americans and we're all very proud of our international standing. But there's another more intense international competition occurring and the United States is no longer on the medals platform. This competition is for our economic future. It's for our standard of living. It's the economic and international competition to educate our citizens to high levels. It's an international competition with tangible impacts on our lives and on our economic opportunities. These empty former Texas Instrument Company buildings and lost jobs of the not too recent past are testament to those tangible impacts. International context, 30 years ago the United States boasted one-third of all the world's college students. Today we have 14 percent. The United States is behind five other nations in the percentage of our young adults with high school credentials. We're 17th in the world for high school graduation rates, 24th in STEM preparation. I know you know what that means, science, technology, engineering, and math. We're fifth with our young adults who are enrolled in college, and that's good news. But we're 16th of industrialized nations in the proportion of those same students who ultimately complete college. Yes, we're near the top in terms of educational attainment of older adults, but for the first time in our history, we have lower educational attainment rates for our younger adults than we do our older adults. Only the United States and Germany in the world right now can point to lower educational attainment rates for younger, younger citizens than older citizens. And that should cause us to all pause. Much has been made of our Olympic competition with China. But the real primetime competition with China is in the field of education. And China is catching up, and it's surpassing us in many areas. China produces twice the number of bachelor's degrees than we do here in the United States. For every one engineer that we produce, six or more are produced in China every year. And while outsourcing of jobs uh, over the past couple of decades, like the Texas Instrument jobs uh, that were here not long ago, 
like those jobs were mostly manufacturing jobs and continue to be, increasingly we're seeing highly skilled jobs being outsourced and shipped overseas. Highly skilled jobs like engineers or engineering. In Massachusetts, we do well when it comes to test results, when it comes to educational attainment rates. We do the best in the nation. And that's good, but it isn't good enough when we look internationally. Our demographics um, are a challenge for us in terms of educational attainment rates. Not enough of our young people are going to college and getting through college. We also have geographic challenges, such as in Attleboro, where certain parts of the state are clearly underserved by higher education opportunities. And we're addressing that gap today. But according to national studies, the changes in our population, the demographic changes in our population in Massachusetts, by 2020, without intervention, educational intervention, we will see a per capita personal income reduction in this state. Only five other states will see a reduction. So to compete and to succeed, we have to work together. We have to be innovative to increase the number of college educated citizens in Massachusetts. It's very important. And in expanding that higher education opportunity to particularly underserved urban areas of the state, we, we stand before a wonderful example of collaboration, of courage, of determination, of perseverance in re reaching this milestone of cutting this ribbon today. We have a lot of heroes, and I mentioned them. President Spraga is clearly a hero. President Molifaria, who not only in his role as president of Bridgewater State College, but in his previous role as education advisor to the governor, has allowed for a vehicle in the capital bond bill, uh, working with our friends in the general court to attach some funds that we hope to secure in the not too distant future for this fine facility. We have those heroes. We have our heroes on the foundation and at the boards of trustees for both colleges. And I, w I certainly want to thank our municipal heroes, the mayor in particular, who took me on a, a great tour here, and I know it's important to him and our city council friends as well. It's that type of entrepreneurial spirit, spirit of collaboration, um, breaking barriers by having a consortial approach to higher education needs where, where a two-year and a four-year college work together in a unique way to address a need. That's the type of vision, that's the type of courage, that's the type of model that we need to replicate in the state of Massachusetts. It's, in a type, it's a type of model I'm very happy on behalf of my colleagues at the Board of Higher Education to say that we support and will continue to support in advance in the days, months, and uh, years ahead. Thank you very much for having me and congratulations. Thank you, Fred. That uh, what a refreshing uh, uh, piece of wisdom that we heard from him uh, today, and uh, it's wonderful to have the support of the Board of Higher Education in this very important project. Um, there was another person who has taken an important role in making the case for public higher education in the state, and most particularly in this region. Dr. Dana Malaferia is president of Bridgewater State College. Most recently, Governor Deval Patrick wisely took advantage of President Malaferia's expertise and his advocacy on behalf of public higher education by appointing him to serve as a special advisor uh, to the governor for education. This significant opportunity provided public higher education with a voice and a role in addressing the challenges that face the state. Dana is not only a colleague, but also a personal friend. I have had the pleasure of working with him in many situations, particularly as a member of Connect, a consortium of the six public uh, higher education institutions in southeastern Massachusetts, um, and which he was instrumental in creating, by the way. And I have found him to be an ardent champion for our students, for public higher education, and this is significant to note, for community colleges, uh, of which he is a shining product. Most importantly for Attleboro, he has made a commitment to partner with Bristol Community College and offer junior and senior level courses here in this building uh, as early as January. And uh, it is a distinct privilege to me, uh, for me to recognize and introduce to you our partner, our advocate, and my friend, President Dana Molifaria. Thanks, Dana. Thank you, much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Jack, for that introduction. 
this is an incredible moment in the educational history of this Commonwealth. I want to first uh, acknowledge uh, the Chairman, Chairman Smith, Chairman Clark, uh, Mr. Mayor, the distinguished members of the legislature, and other guests. This is truly a historic moment. I want to say something about Jack Sprague <clears throat> because you've heard a lot about him and it's all been positive and certainly what I have to say about him <laughs> is more positive. Uh, <laughs> nothing negative, Jack. <laughs> I uh, have worked in this Commonwealth in public higher education for 35 years. Uh, I've worked at every level, in every sector, uh, with people from all walks of life. I have never encountered a champion of the community college system and of students and of this region as I have seen in Jack Sprager. He is an incredible leader. As Jack has said, we have worked uh, together on, on many different issues, uh, and I believe none more exciting than here in Attleboro. Uh, when he invited us to be part of this uh, adventure, we, uh, we, we happily uh, said yes. We wanted to be part of what was going on here in Attleboro, and that we wanted to work together with Bristol to really ensure that the citizens of this region receive the kind of education at a level of quality that they deserve. And so we look forward to being here uh, in January, working with Bristol, and hopefully uh, seeing some expansion and some inclusion of, of excellent programs as we progress through the years. Uh, you uh, heard Chairman Clark describe, and I think, and I would say very aptly describe, uh, the educational situation, not only nationally, but, but here in the Commonwealth. It takes courage and commitment to move beyond discussion, to move beyond thinking, to move beyond concepts, to really make it happen. And that's what President Sprager and others in this Commonwealth have done to make this happen. We are standing here today because there are leaders who had the courage to not accept no as the answer, to find a way to make it happen. I do want to uh, acknowledge one individual specifically who is a true champion of children and education in this Commonwealth. And I've had the opportunity to, to work with her over this past 18 months and prior to that, and I will continue to work with her. Uh, what an incredible person we have here in Southeastern Massachusetts. And that is the chair of our education committee in the legislature, Representative Pat Haddad. <laughs> she is brilliant and beautiful and lovely and wonderful, and she's also a Bridgewater graduate. <laughs> so we, we thank you all, and we look for your support. I know that uh, Bristol and Bridgewater will work together, but we will need your support. This is not simply a center that Bristol has established for the sake of Bristol Community College. It is your center. It is our center. And in that vein, it will take all of us to continue to move this forward. One final acknowledgement before I leave the uh, podium, and that is uh, the chairman of the Bridgewater State College Board of Trustees, a gentleman who has uh, supported uh, our campus and this project who has also been an incredible leader here in southeastern Massachusetts, and a person uh, like Don Smith with vision, and that is Mr. Lou Ricciardi. Who's here? <laughs> so I thank you all, and we, we anxiously uh, look forward to look working together on some exciting endeavors here in Attleboro. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dana. That's wonderful. I uh, got. I don't uh, uh, really want to have things focus on me. You've heard so many people that uh, had to do with this project. It just would not have happened without the great work of uh, countless people inside Bristol Community College that did the work and the planning. And uh, we're now that now that Dana is merely only the president of Bridgewater uh, <laughs> State College, uh, we're glad we look forward to some wonderful things uh, uh, in, a pro, in a collaborative partnership that we already have with Bridgewater State. Um, I'm very happy about that, and I too want to acknowledge uh, uh, the uh, Chairman and President Lou Riccardi of the uh, Trustees because uh, the two institutions are working hand in glove together. And also, 
uh, we're very proud of uh, the. We look. We're proud of what we've done in the past, and we look forward to a terrific future uh, with Bridgewater. Well, um, we have a couple of uh, uh, legislators uh, that I'd like to call up uh, just briefly, if they could. Uh, Representative John Lepper has a uh, uh, resolution uh, from the House, and uh, Senator Jim Timothy from the uh, Senate. Uh, Representative Lepper, Senator Timothy. Thank you very much, Jack. What an auspicious day this is for the entire Attleboro community. Uh, you know, every, everything that uh, I was about to say has already been said. I should say, though, that the leadership of the college itself under Jack Sprager has been phenomenal. Every community, every city in Bristol County is looking for this type of a facility. And fortunately for us, we were able to attract the support of those that were needed in order to accomplish this goal. Therefore, uh, the, the students that will be coming here in the future from the entire area, and I'm very happy that representatives from surrounding communities have taken the opportunity to be here and, and celebrate with us because certainly they will be, their students will be uh, benefited from the accomplishments that have occurred today. This is a resolution. You've heard thousands of these resolutions, but to me, uh, this is a very special day, and uh, I don't read these very often. I usually let my colleague, Representative Poria, read them because she is much more accomplished at passing out citations than I am. <laughs> but uh, I will read this one, and it says, Be it hereby known that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Bristol Community College in recognition of the grand opening of its new Attleboro campus. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success. And is signed by Sal DeMacy, who is the Speaker of the House, and by Representative Betty Poirier and myself, and I'm sure that all the other representatives that are here join in this cel celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Lepper. Now we have uh, Senator uh, Jim Timothy and Scott Brown for the Senate. Thank you very much, Dr. Sprager. A, a, a wonderful day, a, a very special day, the culmination of a, of a dream of mine for quite a long time in, in the legislature and uh, my colleagues. Uh, it takes guts, perseverance, and vision. And Dr. Sprager, Chairman Smythe, the BCC Foundation had all of that. I can tell you right now, I would not want to be sitting across from them at a Texas Hold'em table <laughs> because they got it. And uh, this is the culmination of a dream. I'm very happy to be here. And just think, there were 1,200 to 1,500 kids, young adults, seniors, and people my age going to Rhode Island College, going to CCRI. And right now, because of that guts, perseverance, and vision, a simple matter of justice has occurred, and they are going to be educated here in Attleboro. This is a wonderful day for the Commonwealth and a very special day. And it wouldn't be here without my colleagues in the legislature, the BCC Foundation, and my good friend, uh, the mayor of Attleboro and the municipal council, because they, they were all in it together. And now, the senior man in the Senate, my good friend, Senator Scott Brown. Thank you very much. I'll be very brief because I know it's getting hot and everyone wants to get inside. Uh, you know, this is one reason why I truly enjoy being in public service, uh, to see across party lines a, a total team effort from A to Z. And I just want to extend my congratulations to the Attleboro community and everybody who's been mentioned in our war here. Something new here today, Captain Sprager. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit after this about that. So uh, listen, everyone enjoy this wonderful facility, this great day, this uh, great time in our lives, and I uh, look forward to meeting and seeing all of you. Thank you, Jimmy, for all you've done, and, and the, the council and the mayor and everybody else. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Great Thank you, Senator Brown, Senator Timothy. Well, this is wonderful. We uh, uh, wanted to uh, mention also the support of the community. Uh, 
we've had outstanding gifts to the college uh, from Sensata, from uh, Augit Foundation, Balfour Foundation, Bristol County uh, Savings Bank. Uh, the community is really stepping up to su help support this facility and uh, the collaboration with Bridgewater State will make it even more attractive uh, for members of the community. Uh, and also I wanted to put in a plug for September 12th is our uh, BCC Foundation Gala. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, Elizabeth McCarthy, our uh, Vice President of the Foundation, would have tickets available should you be interested. <laughs> Well, well, the moment has finally come, and I would like to invite all of you who have been recognized, all the names that have been called, to come forward and help us cut the ribbon for this uh, wonderful facility.